It's time once again to delve into the cover price top 10, and we have some new books. We do have some older books, and we're going to take a look at the top 10 most sold comic books, according to cover price, up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, panelologists. Welcome back. This is Jim coming to you with another video and another cover price video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics. There's a whatnot link in the description. Uh, also, Bronzeville underscore comics sales Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. In the link uh, in the description is also a link to my eBay store as well as my email. So we're going to once again go into the cover price top 10. A lot of books are still holding on to the top 10 list. And um, there are a few new books on the list uh, that uh, are with properties that are coming around real soon. So let's jump into the list and keep in mind, these are the books that have the highest sales volume for the week, according to cover price. Let's take a look. Let's start with number 10 on the list, and it is a copy of Uncanny X-Men 221, the first appearance of Mr. Sinister from back in 1987. You get a raw copy, probably have to spend $50 or so for a raw copy, nine eights going in about the $250 range. And there is some excitement because Mr. Sinister is potentially going to be the um, X-Men 97 animated series. Uh, fans initially thought this project was the first to involve mutants in the MCU. However, showrunner Bo DeMeo took to Instagram to confirm that it is no connections to the MCU. The first two episodes debut on March 20th, so we have two weeks. <clears throat> Fans are hyped. I still haven't watched the entire original series. Last year, we learned that Mr. Sinister will return as a featured villain in the series, and Collector's have been scooping up his first appearance since then. As we get closer to the day, none of these are likely to move. Let's take a look at the 9.8 of this book over time, and we can see it had this huge jump as at the beginning of the comic boom. Uh, and I think a lot of that was due to speculation based on the fact that Mr. Sinister has not yet been used in a live action X-Men property has been hinted at. Uh, and that when X-Men do come into the MCU, he is a potential uh, antagonist if they want to not go back to Magneto and uh, use some of the other big villains like Apocalypse uh, Dark Phoenix, which have been used already, but he is going to be in the animated series. So we could see it jumped up like, be, let's see, pre-pandemic, it was in the 200, $250 range, jumped up over $600 and has been on the slow and steady decline since it's held its price for well, maybe about the last 10 months in the mid 200s, uh, you know, sales this month of 290, 262 and 256. Um and I'm glad I have a 9-8 of that book in my collection. Let's go to number nine on the list, and it is a recent book. Avengers Twilight, number one. Uh, this is an Alex Ross cover. It's the first appearance of James Stark, the son of Tony Stark. Raw copies going in about the $10 to $15 range. Uh, and let's see what cover price has to say about this book. They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The statement could be more wrong when looking at Tony Stark's son, James. While the official debuted in this issue, it wasn't until issue three that we saw his own Iron Man armor. In this world, James Stark runs the cyberpunk future alongside his mentor, Kyle Jarvis, a.k.a. the Red Skull. With the positive reception of the Disney Plus series, What If? There could be a time when we see the debut of the villainous James in the MCU. Maybe. I mean, I think that's a, a chance. You're telling me? There's a chance. On um, the small chance, smallest chance that occurs, fans have been scooping up this appearance. I think people just like um, kind of excited maybe about the storyline, uh, a first appearance, an Alex Ross cover. I think that we're finally getting some nine eights, 53 on the census, 49 of the 53 or nine eights. But we're looking at what, $50? I only two sales, 130 a month ago. That was probably a pre order. Because I don't think the book would have been ready then. And again, just be aware, well, maybe it looks like it was an actual picture, of supply and demand. Um, and then down to 56. So there's only two track sales according to cover price. I would not be jumping on a 9.8 of this book. But don't follow my advice. Do your own research and uh, 
collect what you want to collect. Let's go to number eight and another old book with a connection to the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. This is X-Men Adventures number one, the first appearance of Morph and the first uh, appearance of the um, version of the X-Men from the animated series. Tougher book to get in high grade. Uh, and so, but, you know, near mint copies, what? I mean, uh, really near mint, 30 to $50. Uh, 9.8s in the 170 range. Uh, and we look at this this book in a 9.8, right? Now it's moving up to about the $200 range. Again, where was this pre-pandemic, pre-boom, let's say, in 20, 2019? Even in, tw in 2019, it was a less than a $100 book. And now at the boom, it jumped up to a max of 430 and but it's held pretty steady over the last year in the mid 100s in the let's say the 160ish range and um yeah, most recent sale of 190 so some a lot of best offers for less than 200 less than 210 less 186 less than 180 um one of the interesting things is 1300 copies on the census but only one fifth of them 20% 20.6% to be precise are 9.8s this was a book Somewhat like Batman Adventures 12 was more geared to kids. Now, you can argue that X-Men collectors at the time were picking this book up and, and saving it. But um, I, I still think that, uh, you know, look look at the numbers. There there aren't, there are a lower percentage of 9.8s. If we compare that to Mr. Sinister, which came out, Mr. Sinister has a higher percentage of 9.8s despite coming out, what was it, four years earlier? Five years earlier. So... Not a minuscule percentage, but it is a little bit tougher to get a 9.8. Let's go to number seven. Pearl number one, variant cover by Alex Maleev. I don't know. You got me on this one. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Brian Michael Bendis and illustrator Michael Gados brought to life a tattoo artist assassin. And it is an intriguing concept. And Bendis has a huge following. This book has not been a high mover in the past few years. However, as most books these days, a recent announcement has sparked a renewed fire of interest. Bendis and Gatos have begun working with showrunner Chris Collins to produce a TV show for Amazon. Mm, yeah, I mean, this is probably a book that is in dollar bins. And there are, if we, we check it out, uh, there are, uh, th this is the uh, variant cover. Um, the regular cover is by Gatos. Uh, there's a blank, and then there's a Keystone Comic Con foil, which is because it's a foil and it's worth a little bit more. Um, but you know, it's a five ten dollar book. You can, I'm sure you can find it in back issue bins. Um, uh, I how many issues did it run? Twelve issues, and th these are all you know three dollar books. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if it gets developed. Take a wait and see approach on that. Let's go to um, number. And I actually did I pull this up? Yeah, this cover. Eh, there have been some sales. Uh, I mean, back even during the boom, it was kind of going for case cost. Even as recently as last week, forty one dollars sale, and then a seventy seven dollars sale. I imagine there aren't there weren't a lot. I mean, a, a ninety nine dollar listing on eBay. Here's a. Uh, Momoko variant. So that's going to be more expensive. Yeah. So people are asking prices for this book. Um, let's go to number six. And that is Edge of the Spider-Verse, number one, the first appearance of Weapon 8, the regular cover. Uh, there is a, I think there was in the solicitations this most re recent week the foc yeah the second print which is just going to be a little bit color different than the first print um this is the one that people are buying for about 10 bucks it's too recent to have any graded sales you would not be wrong in thinking this is a 1990s x-men cover it has the bells and whistles of that era chad harden brings back an artistic nostalgia with bold lines and exaggerated features that made the 90s cover so dynamic this book was also the first appearance of weapon 8 the predecessor of weapon x or weapon 10 and spends most of the book hunting down an escaped wolverine the book has 
steadily picked up value in only two weeks since its release and tracked 52 copies, sold at a seven-day trend of 85%, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think readers, fans are interested in like the ultimate, these more multiversal sagas and giving a different spin on the characters, uh, you know, characters that kind of are fresh, but familiar at the same time. Uh, so, you know, you know, uh, Miles Morales came from the ultimate universe. Spider Gwen was a multiverse character a reimagining of a character that had been killed 50 years ago uh, in the comic books. So this is something interesting, and um, yeah, it does have that 90s vibe. So you might want to just pick up for, probably for cover price, the second print, if you want to take a, re a read of this book. There are also some other covers <clears throat> on the list. Um, the Amanda Connor, one in 25. There's a Spider-Punk. And there's Nakayama. Yeah, you, you'll have no shortage. A Star Wars homage. Scotty Young. And we'll get to the surprise in just a little bit. Let's go to number five. New X-Men 114 from 2001. The first appearance of Cassandra Nova. A lot of people speculating on this book because of the Deadpool 3 trailer. The anticipation of the movie was high before, but the trailer took to an all-time level. And somebody was talking about this, and I do agree with them. Is there superhero fatigue? Not necessarily. The amount of views that um, this trailer got on YouTube was astronomical. People want to see this movie, whether they're comic book people or not. People like Deadpool. People like Wolverine want to see those characters again. And the movies have been done well. I think there's there have been too many subpar movies. Uh you know, especially, you know, coming out of Sony, coming out of the last gasps of the DCEU, Marvel, not really sure what steps they were taking after the multiverse saga and not having anything that culminated at the end of uh, phase five. So Marvel's had a chance to reset with the strikes and uh, we're getting very little product this year. So people are going to be hungry for it. And then next year, the floodgates are going to open for both Marvel and DC. But that being said, this movie coming out this summer, uh, as fans dig through the trailer, they discover evidence to support rumors and theories that they've been floating around. In the case of Cassandra Nova, many fans are speculating the bald head emerging from the shadows was the villainess. Uh, so let's take a book, look at this, this book over time. 556 copies, not a little ton on the census, but... Look at this, only 59% of them. And this was a book from 2001. So only 59% of them in a 9.8, which is really the what you have to be at because, you know, 9.8s are over 100 right now. Um, in like, I guess, the 125 to 150 range, a, a, an auction that went for only 106. Um, that seemed to be a good buy. And um, look at, I mean, the book was was you know it did it was kind of up and down because you know there weren't a lot of sales of it just because it wasn't really a huge key and it was down well under a hundred dollars lasted up to 170 and then went all the way down in june of last year to 54 rumors of news 165 and then down to 87 and 133 i'd be a little wary of this book long term um, I actually have a copy out at CGC right now, so crossing my fingers that we can get a 9-8 on that. Let's go to number uh, four. Ultimate Black Panther number one. Uh, the A cover, the 9.8s are probably um, uh, solicitations because I don't think the census had any of these books on the census or did it. I could be wrong. Ultimate Black Panther one. No, I'm sorry. There are 137 on the census, 121 on the 9.8s. Um, sales in the 90 to 100 dollar range. Uh, again, supply and demand. We'll see how this number changes over time. Actually, I wanted to look at. I didn't look at the X Men 114. I hadn't refreshed this since last week. So there are 556 Universal last week, 329 9.8s. And if we refresh that, just a few more. Uh, coming to the fray and the 9.8. Let's find where is it. Oh, there we go. 
<laughs> yeah, sales of 160 and 150. Um, hot book right now. The, the prices are increasing on this. Because remember, for a book to make this list, there are just a lot of sales. Not necessarily a lot of high sales. It's the, the volume of sales, not the price of the sales. You know, not record breakers or anything like that. Okay, let's go to number three. Edge of the Spider-Verse number one. This is the surprise variant. First appearance of Weapon 8. Raw books going for, what, 40-ish dollars? Nine eights, 130. I do think I checked this. Yeah. There's no sense it's discovered yet. I have to imagine those are pre-bids or um, not pre-bids, uh, pre-orders by uh, stores that sent in a number of copies confident that they're going to get nine eights. Of course, there's some stores that do that. They don't get the nine eights. They don't uh, send the customers back their money. And then that's a whole other story. Um, so if we look at the rationale here, right? So the Ultimate Black Panther, um, after the success of Ultimate Spider-Man 1, I'm kind of curious to see how Ultimate X-Men 1 is going to do, or just people are, are, are collectors at the point where they're like, let me order that book in multiple copies uh, so the supply will outpace the demand. I'm not sure. Edge of the Spider-Verse surprise variant. A spider-powered individual that existed before Wolverine, while his debut is featured on the cover by Chad Harden, this variant is outpacing the cover appearance. If that's one thing collectors love, it's rarity. This book has not been an open order book. Instead, it was a surprise variant that Marvel sent to comic shops. Local comic shops received one to three copies of the variant to sell to customers, making it much harder to find in the wild. Let's go to number two. Ultimate Spider-Man number one makes the list once again. And we can now take a look at the nine eights. Raw copies are pushing a hundred dollars. Wow, this book is still going crazy. Uh, and if I refresh this, so as of last week, because I think the sales, yeah, no sales. My most recent sale here is two twenty six. So when I'll refresh the page, I'll see how these numbers have changed in the last week. So three hundred fifty six on the census last week. Three twenty three nine, um, nine point eight. I. I know they're going to be more 356 and 323. So another um, 48 copies and another uh, 39 of those 48 nine eights. Let's take a look at the nine eight sales. And we're increasing. The, 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 this book is, is going crazy. I mean, look, all these sales are upwards of $250. The most recent sales yesterday, fixed price, $240. So this book remains hot. People want it. Um, I guess the fact that there aren't many copies to find in the wild or having people figure that it is relatively scarce, although I still, it's a Spider-Man title. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Let's go to number one on the list, Ultimate Spider-Man number two. Um, and so this book is too recent to be slabbed. It's going for about 10 bucks. So I think at this point, people want to continue the storyline. And, um, I think the second, um, I think today is the second print coming out today. I'm not sure. It could be, um, let's take a look actually. We can determine that uh, pre-release number two. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Uh, the pre-release. Uh, the, actually, there's a one in 25 second print version in pre-release. When is that coming out? March 20th. So two weeks that's coming out. So you can pick this up. And then watch the first two episodes of X-Men 97 on March 20th. So that's it for the top 10. Let's take a quick look at the runners up 11 through 20. Pearl number one, the cover A. We talked about that. Power Girl number six, the Dan Panosian one in 25. What sexy Power Girl. It's going to happen. That's a recent book. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis Jinx. Uh... Signed a first look deal with Amazon to develop several properties. 
including his book focused on a female bounty hunter. So Brian Michael Bendis is, has a relationship with, uh, with um, Amazon. It makes sense that they would be adapting some of his comic book properties. How about this? Captain Adam number one. Speculation that we're going to see Captain Adam in the DCU. Uh, aims to underlie. I mean, we'll see. Uh, James Cameron posted pictures of Captain Adam 87 on social media. So that's, I actually just got two copies, two raw copies of this in high grade. That's pretty cool. Dead X-Men number two, Carmen Carnero, one in 25. Uh, yeah. Taylor Swift vibes. <laughs> Jurassic League number one. I think there's an animated series potentially coming out of this. Um, animated film reportedly in the works. Ultimate Fantastic Four number one. Uh, the maker, right? The the Reed Richards character from here is the maker in the new Ultimate Universe. Because this has been a very cheap book for a long time. Um, and then uh, Avengers Twilight number two. And this is, I guess, James Stark uh, getting the armor and the new bullseye. William Gip Gibson's Necromancer from 1989. Uh, Apple TV. Uh, uh, announcing this adaptation of William Gibson's novel about the future dominated by technologies with humans could becoming complacent thanks to virtual reality. Interesting. And they were talking here about Apple's uh, Monarch Legends of Mo Legacy of Monsters. I've been watching that and enjoy that. Spawn 122. Um, so that does it for the cover price top 10 list. Let me know what you think of the books on the list. What do you have? What do you want? What are you like completely confused by? So I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. You can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.